The voltage-gated potassium ion channel, or the KV channel, is a protein involved in the conduction of action potential. Before I get into the important structural features of this protein, I wanted to do a brief review of action potential. At action potential, a cellular signal causes a change in the membrane potential. Once the membrane potential reaches a threshold, the voltage-gated sodium channels will open. As a result, sodium flows into the cell. This marks the beginning of depolarization. Once the membrane potential becomes sufficiently positive, the sodium channels will close and the KV channels will open. This marks the beginning of repolarization. At this point, the K plus ions will flow outside the cell and contribute to the resetting of resting membrane potential. Thus, the regulation of the KV channel must be such that it opens at a more positive membrane potential and closes at a more negative membrane potential. So how does the KV channel open and close at the appropriate voltage? The KV channel's voltage sensitivity is based on the ability of specific residues to change position in a manner that is coordinated with the change in membrane potential. During action potential, ions move across the membrane, which changes the membrane potential. As a result of this flux, the electric field across a membrane changes. From physics, we know that electric fields can do work on a charge. In other words, in the presence of an electric field, a point charge can be translated from high to low potential. We can apply this principle to special key residues on the KV channel, which are located on the S4 helix. In this slide, I basically zoomed in on the voltage sensing domain to show the difference in structure between the open and closed conformation. When the electric field changes as a result of the conduction of an action potential, arginine residues 294, 297, 300, and 303 can change orientation and can result in the transition from open to closed conformation or vice versa. Because these residues are critical to the KV channel's voltage sensitivity, they are one of the most highly conserved residues in the protein. Although the exact mechanism of voltage sensing is not fully understood, the following is one well-accepted theory. First, positive charges flow into the cell during depolarization. As the intercellular space becomes more positive, the positively charged arginine residues that I mentioned in the S4 helix are thus repelled from the intracellular space. As a result, arginine 294, 297, 300, 303 all tilt away from the intracellular space and towards the extracellular space. The change in position of these key residues causes an outward displacement of the S4 helix. This induces a conformational change in the entire protein. As a result, the KV channel adopts an open conformation and potassium ions can flow outside of the cell. In order to close the KV channel, effectively the reverse of what I described occurs. As potassium flows out of the cell and down the gradient, the intercellular environment becomes relatively more negative and the extracellular environment becomes relatively more positive. It's important to remember that the sodium channel also closes at some point in this process. At a certain point, the positive arginine residues become more attracted to the more negatively charged intracellular environment than the extracellular environment. As a result, the arginine residues in the S4 helix move 15 angstroms towards the intracellular environment. The change in position of the arginine residues induces a conformational change in the KV channel, which causes the protein to revert back to the closed conformation. According to this proposed model, this entire process of opening and closing is hypothesized to not require the input of additional energy. Here, the conformational changes in this model are driven by favorable electrostatic interactions between either the intracellular or extracellular environment and the key arginine residues that I mentioned. So what mechanisms are in place for the K plus ion to pass specifically? On the left, we have an image of the KV channel in the open conformation, so potassium ions can pass through the pore. And the figure on the right demonstrates exactly where the potassium ions bind in the protein. The potassium ions are represented by little green dots. They're hard to see, so I've added arrows that point to their location. In physiological conditions, the K plus ions are hydrated by water molecules. Water is polar, so the partially negative oxygen is attracted to the positive potassium ion. But the potassium ion cannot pass through this pore when it is still associated with the water molecules. Thus, in order to get K plus to pass through this pore, the KV channel employs a clever use of molecular mimicry. The residues that line the KV pore actually mimic the ion's interaction with water.
K plus binds the oxygens in the hydroxyls of the threonine residues and the oxygens in the carbonyl group of the backbone. These residues are a part of the TVGYG sequence. This sequence is in fact highly conserved among species as it allows for these oxygen atoms to be oriented in such a way that they mimic how the potassium ion is solvated. This pore has selectivity for potassium because other ions are unable to form as many favorable interactions when not associated with water. So it is less favorable for these other ions to be desolvated in order to pass through the KV channel as a result of fewer stabilizing interactions. Thus, other ions are less likely to pass through the KV pore. An interesting story about this protein is that Waters et al. actually observed a rare mutation to KV channels in a Filipino family pedigree. This mutation was localized to a critical arginine residue in the S4 helix which was used for voltage sensing. Due to this mutation, the KV channel would not be as sensitive to changes in voltage. In this particular family, the tissues that were most affected was the cerebellum, which plays an important role in motor control. Since action potential is involved in neuromuscular communication, it is not surprising that one of the symptoms was ataxia or the inability to control movement. In these individuals, action potential could not always occur with the proper signaling. Another interesting symptom observed in these individuals was neurodegeneration. Waters et al. took the study further and performed additional studies to determine the role KV channels had in neural function. They developed a line of mice with two KV channels knocked out and observed tremors and ataxia. This result provided further evidence that KV channels are necessary for motor coordination and that the mutation has a profound effect on tissues that are implicated in motor control. In the Walters et al. study, they have also stated that new reports observed cases of individuals with both KV mutations and neurodegenerative diseases. A more conservative phrasing of the quote that I have displayed here is that this result suggests that misregulation or insensitivity of KV channels can be involved in neural cell death. Although prions are a more widely researched area for understanding neurodegeneration, the authors suggest that further research of KV mutations can also provide some insights for why such degeneration occurs.